Hi everyone. This is our second lecture on general anatomy on topic osteology and subheading skeletal system. It will be the part 1 and the part 2 will be uploaded soon. So stay subscribed. We will cover the introduction to skeletal system, its function in the body, the ways to classify them, composition of the bone and gross appearance of the bones. The terms in osteology is derived from the word os in Latin and osteon in Greek. You might have heard these terms related to bones. Now, what actually is bone? Bone is nothing but a connective tissue, a specialized connective tissue with calcified extracellular matrix which is secreted by the bone cells or osteoblast itself. It is one of the hardest substances in the body the strength of which is comparable to a steel. Now you guys might be wondering if bone is a living or a dead tissue. Now let me clear your confusion on it. Bone is a highly vascular connective tissue with ever-changing remodeling. Remodeling as you all know is the process of continuous change. This proves the fact that bone is a dynamic tissue that constantly changes shape in relation to the stresses applied on it. The pressure applied on the bone leads to its resorption, whereas the tension applied to the bone results in the development of a new bone, also known as apposition. Bone also exhibits slow characteristic growth pattern and heals itself in case of any trauma. The bone is capable of undergoing atrophy or hypertrophy depending upon the degree of use. Now let me tell you some interesting facts about bone. Femur is the longest strongest and heaviest bone in human body. It is as hard as steel but not as strong as teeth. The smallest and definitely the lightest bone present in the ear is called as tapes. Hyoid is a lonely bone which is not attached to any other bone. There are normally 12 ribs in human but in some people there may be presence of extra pair of rib called as the cervical ribs. Funny bone is not a bone but a nerve. It is a ulnar nerve. Clavicle is also known as beauty bone. Skinny people often like to flex it. Human and giraffe have same number of bones in their neck. Now why are bones so important? Let's discuss the few functions of bones. Alright? So the major function of bone is to provide the primary structural framework to the body. It provides shape and support to the inter internal organs. The bone contains a central cavity, the marrow cavity, which houses the bone marrow, and it is a major hematopoietic organ. The bone also provides attachment to the muscles, tendons, and ligaments, and serves as levers for the muscles attached to them, thereby multiplying the force of the muscles to attain their movement. Air sinuses are the hollow spaces in head which makes the head lighter and aids in resonance of voice. The air ossicles help in the amplification of sound in middle ear. Now talking about the total number of bones. In human body, total number of bones is 206, out of which your upper limbs, which are two in number, each contain 30 bones. Similarly, your lower limbs, which are also two in number, each contain 30 bones, making the number 60. Your head consists of 29 bones and your thorax is made up of 25 bones. Your back is made up of 26 bones and you have two girdles in your body. Since you have already completed your entrance exams, now you have known what a girdle exactly means. It is a structure that encircles our next body part. So you have four pectoral girdles and two pelvic girdles. Now talking about the number of bones in different age groups, there is a vast difference in the bone of a child and bone of an adult. The child bones are more hemopoietic, that is, they play a primary role in blood formation and many of them are unfused. They are about 350 in an infant which subsequently fuses and gets reduced to 200 bones in a normal adult. Now talking about the composition of the bone, bone is made up of cells and extracellular matrix. Basically, bone is made up of cells lying in an extracellular matrix that has been calcified. As a result, 
the bone cells get entrapped within the matrix within the hollow spaces called as lacuna. I'll talk about this later, don't worry about it. Talking about the extracellular matrix, it comprises of the fibers and the ground substance. The primary fibers comprising of the bone is type 1 collagen fibers. Whereas the ground substance is made up of glycosaminoglycans and proteoglycans. These are nothing but heteropolysaccharides. You will be reading about it in your biochemistry classes. Now talking about the chemical composition of bone, especially of the matrix, it has inorganic and organic components. The inorganic component makes about 65% of the dry weight and is composed of crystals of calcium hydroxyapatite, mostly of calcium and phosphorus. Whereas the organic component makes up about 35% of the dry weight and comprises mainly of the type 1 collagen fiber. Now let's discuss about the cells of the bone. The medical students most often, as a basic question, are asked the name of the bone cells in viva, but still they screw it up since they miss out the osteoprogenitor cells. The osteoprogenitor cells are derived from the embryonic mesenchymal cells which are totipotent in nature and retain their ability to undergo mitosis. They have the potential to differentiate into osteoblasts. Now talking about osteoblasts, they are the cells that are derived from the osteoprogenitor cells and synthesize the organic matrix of the bone. They are low columnar or cuboidal in shape, as you can see in the figure. Whereas the osteoprogenitor cells are slightly elongated since they are very active in their function. The osteoblast exocytose their secretory products. The each osteoblastic cell surround itself with a bone matrix, also known as osteoid it has just produced. When this occurs, the imprisoned cell is referred to as osteocyte and the space the osteocyte is lost is known as lacuna. Hence, osteocyte is nothing but a mature bone cell that now lacks any secretory activity. The osteocytes that are located within the lacuna exhibit cytoplasmic processes that are housed in the canaliculi. We'll be discussing this in details in our next part of the lecture under histology of bone. The osteoclasts are multinucleated cells and originate from the granulocyte macrophages progenitors. This means the blood cells producing granulocytes and macrophages also produces osteoclasts. They primarily have resorptive function. You can see the diagram in the slide showing all the bone cells reflecting their function. Now let's talk about the classification of bones. This is the most important question asked for you in general anatomy, so please pay attention in this. Bones are classified on the basis of their shape, the developmental classification, regional classification, and structural basis. We'll be talking on them one by one. The term axial means within the axis, or the line passing between the center of your body. If you rotate, the atoms of the axial line will have only one rotation motion and not translational motion. The term append means attached structure. Recall the word appendages and appendix you have studied in your entrance phase. As you can see in the diagram, the axial skeleton is shown in blue whereas the appendicular skeleton is shown in pink or red. Now talking about the structural classification, it basically shows the macroscopic and microscopic classification. We will be talking on microscopic part today and microscopic will be dealt in part second. Now what is compact and lamellar bone? Compact bone is dense and is found in the cortex of long bones. It can resist mechanical pressure. The spongy bone has meshwork of trabeculae with intercommunicating spaces. Now talking about the developmental classification, there are three basic types, the intramembranous, intracartilaginous and membranocartilaginous. The term intramembranous means that the bone is developing from the within the membrane, right? Within the network of fibrous membrane. Or you can also say that the bone develops from the direct transformation of the condensed parenchyma to the bone. For example, skull bones. The intracartilaginous bones, as the term itself suggests, the bone is developed from the embryonal hyaline cartilages. The examples are all long bones except clavicle. Remember this point. I'll be talking about this later. 
The membranocartilaginous bones are partially derived from membrane or mesenchymal condensation and partially from the cartilages. There are few such bones, for example, mandible. This is a very important question for the dental students. Most of the bones in human body are somatic bones, whereas a few are visceral bones. It includes aerocycles, hyoid bone and part of mandible. According to shape, the bones can be classified into long bones, miniature long bones. The miniature long bones basically are short bones, but remember don't call them short bones in front of your anatomy professor because he's going to make fun of you. The other types include flat bones, irregular bones, pneumatic bones and sesamoid bones. Now let's talk briefly about the bones. Uh, we'll talk about long bones in a while. Uh, the flat bones are shallow plates, example skull bones, ribs, sternum and scapula. Okay, And the irregular bones don't actually have a definite shape, example vertebra and your hip bones. Your vertebra don't have a definite shape, right? You can remember it that way. The pneumatic bones are very light since they have the hollow spaces and are most commonly found in skull. Your head is very light, remember that. For example, maxilla, sphenoid and ethmoid. The professors are fond of asking the medical students about sesamoid bones. I was also asked about it by the external in my anatomy exams in my viva. So remember the examples are patella, pisciform and fabella. Now let's discuss briefly about the long bones. A long bone has an elongated shaft as you can see in the figure called as diaphysis and two rounded ends called as epiphysis or the two epiphyseal ends. The shaft will be like a triangle if cut transversely. Now you know what a transverse section means, right? It's a basically a horizontal section. And you will notice three surfaces representing the sides of a triangle and the three borders representing the angles of the triangle. It will have a hollow cavity in the center, which is filled with a marrow substance, which is prime hematopoietic in function at the early stages of life. You will notice an aperture called as nutrient foramen near the center of the shaft for an artery to enter. This artery supplies the nutrition to the bone and hence it is called as nutrient artery. Okay. The long bones are further divided into three divisions. A typical long bone will have all the characteristics of the long bone mentioned above. You have to memorize them. All right. While the other two types, the miniature and the modified will have some deviations from the characteristic shown in the video. So let's find out. The miniature bones will have only one epiphysis unlike the typical which has two. Right, I had already told you about the epiphyseal ends which are two in number. The last one is the modified long bones. It is called so because they do not have the medullary cavity. Thanks for watching the entire video. We definitely will try to cover what's important for you in your upcoming days. Hope you like the content. Do share it with your friends and if you really appreciate our effort, hit the like button, subscribe our channel and comment down your queries or any reviews. Team Medit welcomes you. Goodbye.